Hello and welcome back to the Google APIs for Rust and YouTube Uploader development stream. It's Byron speaking and we are here with issue 60. Implement the scalar required arcs and a dummy request value um, for, well, in our um, call handler method. So what does that mean? Uh, this means basically that we want to be able to parse uh, the API, uh, parse these values here. So that's a simple part, right? That's a that's simple required scalar values, which are um, scalar types like booleans, integers, and whatnot. And we have to parse this into the correct type, uh, figure out errors on the way. I mean, for instance, if we can't parse it um, or convert it into the required type, and so on. And finally, of course, create a um, call builder that looks like this. Oh wait, actually this is something we can always do, cool. And create a call builder with the respective required methods uh, here. And I'm talking bullshit. I'm Create a call builder um, which requires us to have parsed this information beforehand, right? Because this is the um, call builder that we actually want and then we are there then we can possibly execute do it uh, but all we have to do is to basically set the additional uh, parameters here but to do that for at first we need to get the required scalar parameters and as a ticket claims we want to have a dummy request value because the request value parsing this is much more complicated let's have a look at the YouTube uh, main which I also will have to rebuild to make any sense? Yeah, let's try to run it. No, let's just build. And as you can see, this can be more difficult because here in, in case of the insert call, for instance, let's look for dash R and see if there is one that has a simple scalar value and dash R, not here, not here. No, 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 no. Okay, apparently I cannot make, ah, here. One, the last one. So watermark set, for instance, shows that the required um, parameter could also build a structure, right? And the structure stuff is more difficult to parse. And that's kind of the, the, the you know, that's kind of the primal thing here. That's the last thing I will do. Because first I want to parse all the simple things and make sure this is there and fine and yeah, go slowly on it. I think I will, I will start then parsing this uh, dash P, the, the parameters next, because that's kind of the simple thing as well. And then kind of ease in there a bit. But uh, yeah, we start simple actually uh, by doing what we do. So the first time I, I look at this just to see how it looks like, uh-huh, uh-huh quite neat actually I, I do like it here we have all the individual calls amazing uh -huh, uh -huh. and that's how this looks like that's the logic there's nothing more to it awesome and all this works many things but we will not do it with that we will obviously work with discovery which is much easier to grasp for now okay so simple scalar values First, I need to know what the required parameters are. Uh, for that, I will need to get the method context. Look at that, we have all this information that we need to get the method context, that's very nice. So I guess we wanna have some code here and create the new method context. Nothing more to be done here. Then the required properties so here we go, right? Here we explicitly filter out the, re the request value property, which is something we will not do now, but we will handle it specifically because it needs special handling. Uh, however, um, yeah, that's, that's really what we wanna do. Um, so I guess I will take this code and just take it as a reference here so that I know the method names that we need. New method context, something that I, okay, I've got it here. Interesting, I've imported it, but never used it until now, which is, you know, 
kind of too late if you think about it. But anyway. Um, yeah, and something I can already do is make this initial call, right? So give me the... Yeah, let's have a look at the documentation just to see what the types are. So this is a call I can always make. That's the initial call. That's the primary command. And uh, just gives me a thing here. Does it need uh, a type or an instance? Does it need to be mutable? No, never. It never mutates itself. So it's as easy as let's... Um, how do I call it? Resource builder method. That's a method builder. Method builder. Let this be self hub. And let me go with. Let me go with what? <laughs> That's a good question. I have to look it up actually just to know what kind of name I use. I think. Uh, lib r s macro. I think I use yeah just an identif the mangled identifier. Good. So that's what I will do here as well. Just mangle ident. Just to have the same name for the method call. Mangle ident resource, and then we will just make the call here, and that's awesome. So here we have the method builder that will then later allow us to uh, do what we want to do. And considering that we actually don't use it yet, you know, we, we don't have to keep this intermediate result. We can actually create the call builder right away, but this means we first have to um, figure out the required parameters. And this is something that we worry about in this ticket, right? And it shouldn't be too hard either, let's see. But it might be cool yeah, let's see how, how that works out because we have to do some type transformation, some type handling, but only for simple scalar types from now and 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 set the infrastructure groundwork for the structure parsing, which is more involved, that's for sure. So that makes all this so interesting, I think. Oh. All right, so this means all this. No, that's just, I'm just wondering. I think I'm getting getting the, so what happens if I do foo? I think this will be then on the far left, right? Yeah. So I guess I want to have a filter on this one. It says indent all but first. Indent all but first by one, two. Yeah. Because this will be left aligned. Then this is cool because this kind of allows us to, you know, use more of our horizontal screen space. So it should now look properly if it would be working. I think I don't import it yet. <laughs> In and all, but first by there we go. And now it should look properly, which it does not. I think it does not because it needs to be buffered. Fine. So we buffer this thing. This will be a big method. Buffered means, uh, I think like that. Buffered means that it will basically put it into a string first, which can then be manipulated by filters. Otherwise, it will put it into the stream without filtering it in any way. So buffering is kind of more intense, costs more memory and stuff, but also allows us to do fancy stuff or fancy things. So question, why is the closing bracket not aligned the way it should be? Maybe this is because of that? Yeah. Cool, that looks good, kind of. Also means we have one space too much here. Oh no, wait. Maybe I want to do it like this. Uh, no, no, I would be super happy if this would, yeah, I think what I have to do, uh, I think that doesn't make a difference here, huh? that is, doesn't matter, no, and I think what I have to do is just to remember that the last line must be um, like this, anyway, 
I will try to remember and keep this thing here none as long as possible, as long as we don't do a call. Yeah, I think that will be that's the structure here that, that we will be using. All right, nice, good enough. And um, now we have to iterate our required parameters. and do stuff. Oh, I think I copied the entire thing, nearly. Required parameters. Let's mark it. I think that should be further down here. Just so that we do not lose our understanding of what's happening here. And yeah, I want to keep this small and possibly factor a complex part out into yet another um, Mako method. And for each, oops, each required parameter. And uh, yeah, if this is a scalar value, I think we just go ahead with our standard scalar handling. I think I can also put this here now. If it's request, property, then we do some special stuff. Uh huh. So here I would say directly on the stack, uh, one, one after another, uh, I will put my parsing results, basically. Um, and then I will, if all the parsing results are okay, then I will put Mm, yeah. The the builder I want to well I would like to uh, the point is that I yeah I'm I'm getting ahead of myself maybe. Let's let's do this first. So if this is a request value property, we have special handling for the structure which will now be a dummy and of handle handle request property request value good so that that means here we have a standard a very simple um, scalar value and the type of that thing is basically given here and I think what I want to do is first print my simple scalar value just so that I know what I have here print this and let's see how that looks like Boom. Okay, so here we have the n description, required, priority, so what is that? API and version. I think we iterate in exactly that order without ordering anything. So we'll keep that order. And the question is, you know, we could get the order wrong and the order matters. The question is, do I order this? Or not? Am I just lucky that this is the same order? Um, but this is a list, right? And I trust it. I use it everywhere. But I want to check. So that's an M build required. Where would I see this? Fn at param fn at scope mangle ident. I think that's the one. Uh, that's not no. Get rest. No oh, wait, that's the wrong one. It's an R build. So here we have this. So here we have type arms method args. I just want to check required props. Okay, I do not sort anything here. I just use required props as they are. And that's the point here. Mangle ident activity input type. And that gives me the type name of that thing. Uh, yeah. I think I don't want to go by that. Or do I? Let's print this. Let's see what that is. And if this is always a pot type, 
that is listed here, then I can just convert this stuff. Basically say, um, you know, let foo, let x be an i32. Yeah, I think that's kind of what I want. So let's get both of these because I will use these identifiers as well for my variable names. Um, I will keep this open for now because I think it can be useful just to see how we did it before. And how we did it before is the right thing and I would like to keep doing, would like to keep doing the right thing. So let's print this for a moment. So activity input, mangle ident, activity input type we don't have yet. Just put it in for now. So that's a an str. Hmm. Activity input type. Okay, so that's a flag. That's something I set. And then activity Rust type. Okay. And if n equals string, so I basically make the conversion myself here, even though I want to have a string. Oh, well, I have a string already. So here there are a few special cases. If this is a string, then I just use it as is, because I only parse strings here. I do not set types for doc ops at all. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, how do, I, how do I know? Let's have a look at this initial printing here. Type. You type string. I think I use these, right? So that's type. Let's use this. Let's do this for now. And I think I also want to do this in code here. Boom. Because all I need is the parse the from string method if there is something like that and if it's a string already then we don't do anything let me just take it as is okay so let's let's encode this uh, if p type is string then our variable is what it is and it must always be set to something that's also important because we do error, check, error checking here and the parsing can always fail I mean not in this case because we have a string already but in other cases and then we just want to have an, an, an empty like default value for this variable because we will not use it anyway else so in all the other cases we will have to parse something handle um, argument type. So I could also say, well, there's always this, and then we set it uh, to some value. Um, so this is mangle ident, mangle ident, p, oops, P name uh, type shall be so now we just go with the rust type no, um, so here we do this this conversion right uh, where is it um, activity activity something activity input type so I think this activity rust type is what I would like to call because that gives me a string possibly and all this Handling here, I don't want because we want to store the stuff. You don't want to pass it. True Rust type. Oh yeah, well, I will use this anyway. So it's activity Rust type and optionals are not allowed. Oops. Here we go. That's and I use C schemas just to be sure. Then is my property. and allow optionals shall be false and that is that 
this is something I will specify in the next line. Uh, activity Rust type I need to put in. I think the input type I'm going to drop now like this. Good. So if it's a string, the, the type I mean, let me do it like that. I hope the type is never any because any we can't handle. But I think it will not be. And if there is something that is weird, then we will uh, produce incorrect non-compiling Rust code, which is also fine. You know, it's just important that we don't mess it up without knowing. That's the important part. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so if it's a string, we just set it. And I mean, we have real strings here. We will clone it because I don't want to partially steal or partially move uh, our structure there. Even though I possibly can, I'm just afraid of it, that stuff will happen and that is weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's try it, let's try it before we say we can't do it. But that will be a partial move now. So we uh, just set this to, it has to go to the left now, to, uh, Oh yeah, true. Access self and itself opt. And then what's the variable name? The variable name is arc uh, flag. What is it? We're talking about the mandatory stuff. Arc version. Okay, so it's arc something. So there we have a more need method. Arc arc identifier similar to command ident but for arguments I know I could have a method that takes like these two parts but well um, so arc identifier of our um, p name, huh? Yeah, I guess the same I use here. Do I use name? Yes, I do. Mango subcommand. Okay, the same, the same I do here, right? Yeah, that that is fine. I just had to assure myself because I don't want the name stuff to go wrong from the beginning. I would see it, I would, you know, the compiler would bark at me, but I would rather not have it bark at me for that reason. So if it's a string, we just assign it for now without a clone, which could be a problem. And I guess I would be fine keeping this. Um, opt arc opt identifier because I might need this multiple times oops here we go that's this plus the result of that and I can just use it here directly opt ident and there we go so now we should set string values which basically means that here we should see something show up that makes some sense Okay, so we are using a function that we do not have. Arc ident, maybe it's arc ident, huh? that's new. Mm -hmm. Arc ident, there we go, maybe we are lucky now. And the generation works, it did. We're still printing stuff. Oi. Okay, we're totally, yeah, because of me thinking that this is, it's total nonsense. So this has to go to the far left. This stuff, I guess I want to put one to the left at least. One to the left, 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 like that. And all the stuff here I have to just put to the left. So this makes it now hard to read, but that's how it's going to be. Can't change it. 
we are just at the root here, so we put it to the far left, that's all right. Oh wait, like this I want it. But this goes to the far left now. And that's how that is. Cannot move out of borrowed content, cool. So that was our test, right? And that was kind of expected because yeah, we are borrowed, we don't own it. So partially owned structures we can't even create because we are in a borrowed situation here. Good. So look at that, you know, bang. That's, that's already the parsing that we have in this case. Uh, and I guess we have to look at the YouTube version now. YouTube main to learn more. Like what happens if we set, what do I want to look at? Part ID, it's all strings. Video ID. Maybe it is indeed all strings, huh? Let's find one that doesn't have a string. By aborting assert false. Again, all. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that makes that so much easier. Ah, oh, there we go. Fusion tables. I shall have fusion tables main. Cool. Table ID, column ID. I think these guys would be candidates. Good. And now um, I want to create this type from. Yeah, how, how do I do this? Um, from from string, right? From SDR, there should be a trait that allows me to do these conversions. Type inference will help me here because it knows what it should assign to. I think it's really like from. Yeah, I don't know. From string and from, are these now obsoleting each other or what? From string, and we have a specific error type. That's also all right. It's kind of, well, it makes it difficult more difficult for me to handle this correctly, but I think they will just use normal errors. So here we have from string for all the standard types, that's awesome. And I wonder if this from, maybe I didn't fully understand, that's the generic ones, right? From, from string for string. Construct self via a conversion from something else. So that takes ownership here. I see. String and S. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, so it's not the same. Good. So I use from, from str. I don't know if I have to import this thing or not. Maybe I'll just try to use it. And this shall return a result. Uh, so this is a match. We will have a default default value if this didn't work out. So I need default default once again. Let's get here. Use sdrd default default and I will just do it use std string from str if, it, if they don't have the default they probably don't have from string either okay so match from from str from string then we hand over a borrow to our uh, opt identifier which contains the value and that shall be either an error of some type that I do not know. And this is the error that we want to pass on. For now, we don't. And just say, okay, whatever. In any case, default 
default shall be what is the return value here or we have an okay of a value which then shall be returned directly and that is that so in theory that already works uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's build the fusion tables CLI well maybe you also build it uh excuse me oh i didn't save it haha uh -huh. sorry did it already update no it's still hanging there we go that's weird where's my match look at that the table id column id it's all not that so here is my first thing i32 so that's my match from string does it look good yeah i think it looks okay maybe i want to even have it on the next line like this then i can put it like i don't know how would that look like build failed oh wait what what um, maybe I have to update this first maybe this for some reason isn't really that would be weird if all of a sudden what the heck oh now I get it doc opt under the hood changed uh... oh Oh, frag. Mm, which dog up works for us? Let's go crazy and just f fix it to some um, version that we uh, need. So it's again discovery. So here we have a working version still. That's good. I think it's maybe 5.9. And there's the cargo lock. Show me show me what this is we have doc opt 0659 okay so we will put it there this is probably you know ad adapting to the nightly and i just don't want it now so oh yeah doc opt is type cli specific the cool thing is we can just say equals that please and now this should actually build yeah that is true but doc of macros i think i think it just uh you know i just want to clear this out again fusion tables to cli go we do and now it should make it work yeah i could just can't go back it's interesting but whatever it's easy enough to just clean it and uh, yeah now I invalidated all my stuff as well but hey that's how it is sometimes I think I will also build YouTube really interesting that YouTube didn't actually completely recompile because after all the oh the cargo didn't change I see this only affects CLI that's good hey it's still putting in the wrong version what what the heck the fusion tables not Yeah, well, it's the wrong one. Come on, fusion tables. I did that once, that should work. So that's the CLI here. See, doc opt of 659. 
So what's what's the matter? That should work. I thought there was a syntax that did a change again or something. Or does it have to be? Huh? I don't know why. I just upgrade it. It can't do it to me. It has to use this. I'm not willing right now to upgrade my compiler. That's the thing. Because that can cause a lot of other issues that I just don't want now. I don't want to gamble on this. I just want this to be 059. Come on. Doc opt. Why does it upgrade? Weird. Doesn't even use this. Ha. Huh? I just don't get it. Make fusion tables to CLI. Right. And still compile. Oh, doc up macros. So interesting. It pulls the latest one here. And that's still not right. Now I get it. Sorry, these probably go together usually and well now they definitely do because I say so. Let's remove this again and try again. Hey. Didn't I remove this? Apparently not. <laughs> So that should now work until further notice. And I should not forget that I did that because if I update, then obviously this will stop working. And then I have to make sure I get the latest again. Remember, remember that you just fixed your dependencies. Hmm. Yeah, actually my plan is to upgrade the next time when Rust 1.0 is out. That's the thing. I'm totally willing to work with this compiler now and be happy because beta is out, right? This kind of is a sign for a certain amount of stability. Really, the next bunch of work will be to make it work in Rust 1 and that's it. Maybe on the 10th or something or when the... Yeah, I think in the moment I want to release the command line tools, I will upgrade before. I'll just do it once. And then um, I will do the same work again for version 1.0 and then that's it, right? And then that was the nightly action. Yay! Okay, so that's just a colon missing, uh, semicolon missing. There we go, now it's there. Now we should be fine here. That doesn't look too bad. I think I want to put this one item to the right. And yeah, maybe I put it onto the same line. Huh? Yeah, it's fine. Let's put it onto the same line like this. Just cosmetics. But it works. Oh, call result is never read. Uh, does this point... Huh, weird. Why did it say that? Template update and use variable dry run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Table ID never used. Yeah, that's true. I thought I have read something about core result never used. Okay, anyway, we will just fix this easily once, once we are there. Good, so that seems to work. Awesome. And that's how we are. That's basically how the conversion is supposed to work. Easy. So all we have to do now is to um, keep the error somehow. And I don't even know what kind of error I'm getting. So what kind of error do you give me? Uh, 
Uh, let's have a look at the implementation. From string for f32, probably it's a macro that implements these types. Uh huh. Of course. Um, so error equals. Okay, parse bool error. So it seems that I'm unable to generalize the kind of parsing error that will be provided to me. However, I might be able to get a description. And I think I will use the description and just put it in. Okay. So let's have this. I would just format a text myself, like could not parse this flag and this was the error or something like that. Good. So this means I will need a new error type, CLI error, configuration, parse error. Yeah, so let's have a parse, parsing, configuration, parsing error. And then, Yeah, the parsing error can be related to structures, can be related to the required scalar parameter, uh, parameters and so on, scalar, yeah, scalar parsing error or something. Do I need a, do I need to have a hierarchy level here? Do I need another type? Uh, I don't know what is anticipated parsing errors yeah I think it's a parsing error I, I will put it here right now parse parse error that contains a string with the description CLI error parse error, ref description, and we just write this description. And I think I can even do it like, like this. Uh, yeah, as it's not a hierarchy level, I don't have to do this special thing. So it's just like F, FMT, and then we, oh, sorry, the other way around, uh, description, format, and then put it in and be done. Cool, I think that is that. So a CLI error, CLI error, parse error, which should be put here. So this was put onto issues, onto my error flag now. What's it called error? Error issues push, CLI error, parse error and then we have a string which is a description and uh, uh -huh, with error and that's the parsing error that we now extract uh, p error per per description Actually, I can just print it like that, huh? I guess. Yeah, let's do it like that. The display can be more informative than the plain description, I think. So here we go. With error that. And then fail to parse, fail to parse argument. And then we go with so that's the required arcs, right? So that's always this guy. And then it's mango. Mango subcommand. Mm, p.name. Ah, that's it. Fail to parse argument as. That's something I should also mention. As. P dot type 
with error. Okay, that's all the information I have. Huh? I try to re-parse this. Oh yeah, the, the value. Pair to parse argument as huh with yeah, I think maybe this contains information about the value that went wrong there. But I think that's sufficient to figure out what went wrong in total. And not to forget a semicolon and then still we want to assign the default value. Good. Let's see if that compiles, but it should. CLI error. Is there push? Yeah, I think that's what, what's. I think it's something with. Something is missing here, like a semicolon, but the semicolon is obviously there, so what? What's wrong with you? That looks shitty. I don't like it. I don't like it. Honestly, I'd rather have a space here and put the entire thing one to the right. That still will not build, but it will look a bit better. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff is missing too. No, nothing is missing. I'm substituting a lot in there. Fail to parse style ID as integer with error. So that looks actually quite cool. Now, why am I not seeing what the problem is? Expected one off or an operator found CLI error. This is not a type here, or what? Ah, it's not a type. It's not known yet. Why would that be CLI error? Thanks. So that should be a bit better now. Hey! Something is wrong. It's pub, right? It's pub, yeah. And see, the IRS is what I store, so I can push it on. That's the whole idea. Yeah. I'm picking it up now. Yeah. And I'm pushing it. Damn it, 107. Let's go there. Maybe it's something special there. Really? Oh. Sorry, it's here. Ah, damn it, I'm dumb. Here I messed it up. Here somewhere. Yep. Yay, silly me. Silly, silly me. Good. All the time it was working, even though I fixed the bug, that wasn't yet a bug. That is the missing use. And I think the compiler will give you a nice warning if that should be the case. Cool, so here we set, here we parse the stuff. Okay, the, the point is, if that works, we are cool. Uh, if that does, you know, we will not, we will proceed further, but we will not try to use these, val in, well, let's see, we could, the thing is, the question, if there is a problem with parsing one of these, uh, should we still make the call builder? with default values, knowing that it will not be used? Or should we not do it? I think we should do it. We just will not make the call. In any case, we'll not, we'll make sure we don't, we are not asked to call stuff in the moment there's something in there. This will result in a panic. Good, so let's do that. So we just pretend everything is cool and you know, we keep our values around, initialize them, Initialize them with uh, default values, which is good enough to make the call, uh, which will never go through because we will not make it if there is such an error. Cool. Oops, that's the wrong one. Here we are. So now the next thing, the last thing is the dummy part. So if we are, 
uh, here if this is a request value then we should uh, request property value something uh, then we should set it to the respective type and I have no idea uh, what the type name is is it ID maybe <laughs> I think for that I can use YouTube as well. YouTube build. Yep. Um, so here we go. Uh, let's let's do the same thing. Where's the identifier? Mangle. Mangle ident. I think <coughs> for that I use request usually. Yeah. That request of type PID. Just guessing. B default. Default. That's the thing for now. We shall do more later. Okay. So that's not how that works. Request value property. So that's where it starts anyway. We'll start with the default one, and then we will set the values one by one, uh, possibly in a separate method, just to keep the stuff out of there, and keep it more readable. Because that, so far, is quite readable. Not much happens here, for the most part. All right. Um, not ID. <laughs> R build, yeah, how does this thing, how does it work? Request, how do you know? Request value, so how is this used? Oh, oh yeah, true, if part prop and request value yeah, we have to check because we don't want to have duplicates there, but I th think we don't have that anyway. Mangle ident, request value, property name. Okay, so we have this hard coder, but where's the type man? Type man. Uh, oh, wait, maybe it is. Yeah, so here in the method arcs, right? Here's where we set the types of all these guys. Activity input type, uh, yeah, that's the one. And here we know that we have an input type. I think input type is the thing that we have here. Actually, I want to be sure, and I will just print this. Show me. Yeah, let's try it. Input type, which seems to be the one that it uses anywhere. Ray, I would just trust. Oh, come on. Okay, that's not the one. Fine, print P, show me what you have. And uh, yeah, I think I can also put this here right now. Um, anyway, details, did it print it? Yeah, is query parameter request? Ah, that's a ref, T ref. Okay, activity. I think I want to do a two Rust type here. Activity Rust type. Yeah, I think that's what I want here. Uh, I also use it here. Well, oh, that's cool. So. What's the what's the name? Does it have a name? Request. Okay, let's let's keep it really simple. I will because I want to share this code. I don't want to have the special case that this one is called request and stuff. So for each required property, we have some code here, some variables that we just keep for ourselves. So prop name shall be this. And the prop 
the type. Shall be this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C types P, that is that. So then we can just put this here. Prop name. Uh, and you know, why not? I can put it here, I don't use it everywhere. But now that we have this here, I think we can as well use it. And that's the type, prop type. So you can do the same thing here. And for now, we'll just repeat it. It's okay. I can optimize that later if I think this is the right thing to do. So prop name, prop type is default. That shall give me a valid type that I can use. Oh, besides the fact that we have to use it from API, right? But that's okay. API. And then there is some issue. Oh, damn it. I have no idea. I think both of these don't want to be there. Okay. And yeah, maybe I want to keep fusion tables for now. Table to the main. Okay, that works. So the request is still on the wrong si side of town. API video, but that works, it's gorgeous. Why? Oh, that, that's why. It has to be on the far left to work for us. So now it should look better. Cool, so that's right type, and we have it all. We just have to parse it. That's ugly, but hey, what can I do? I could put the return value on a new line. I can do that. It's more lines, but you know, better line break. And maybe even a bit further, like this, maybe. I like that. Ugh. That looks very different here. Maybe one, two, three, four. Another four, maybe, or three. One more to the right, and I think then we are done. Cool. And I've been building and building this, totally wasting cycles because there's no need to build it, right? We're just doing cosmetics here. And that's YouTube. And the cool thing is that, yes, we are, with that, we are done. Uh, let's let's get more of the logic in there, which basically means now that in theory we have parsed all this. Obviously, this is not yet implemented, but will be done at some point. Request required parameter. If we have, once we have the required parameters, we can already set up our builder, and we will do that. That's the call. No matter what. And now we have at least a default value for this stuff. So hub, that's the resource. And then we have the mangle identifier of the method. And now we have all the things that we want to pass. And there, I guess we want to do the activity rest type because that deals with all the nitty gritty details of making a borrow out of something that usually is not a borrow. Okay, so here we have, here we start, and then we do the looping, and loop over the required props once again, and for each required prop, the cool thing is that now we can actually already um, start doing the call. You know, we are, we are kind of, we don't do the full parsing yet, but we can do simple list calls. That's awesome. So once this is done, I can already use the discovery API and see if this, of my stuff generally works. That's pretty nice. 
How much time spent? 60 minutes. Okay, that's pretty, that's a lot, but you know, let's finish this. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit longer, but it's a huge step here. Good, and now uh, we have to be on the far left. We just say p name, which is the prop name. Oh, uh, well, no. Oh, shit. Well, I think whenever a type is copy, how do I do this? Yeah, so if it's a weak, I, I think I have to figure this out myself, which is okay. I just have to find out if something is copy. So that's the, so that's the borrow. Borrow shall be nothing. So basically it's really just, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pre-generate these guys. Yeah, let's pre-generate this. Because it's easier with the with the um, commas. Because then we can just use a join. So I put this here, have some space. I mean, not there exactly. Blah, blah, blah. And then we just substitute in the call arcs that we will now actually create. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Like that. Call arcs starts out empty. Then we say for PNMC required props. Oops. It's required prop. And yeah, it's actually a list, right? And the borrow starts out as not being a borrow. And it's never mutable as well. It's always just that. And the cool thing is, thanks to auto dereferencing rules, all we have to take care of is the borrow. The rest will be will be done automatically, automatically. So call arcs, actually what I want is put this in here with a join and then we are done, obviously I want to substitute that and there is a bug in there, a syntax error now this works better call arcs append basically it's just this and this which is, well actually Let's do borrow plus um, prop name. Oh, prop name I don't have here. Prop name I say with, I get with mangle ident and p dot name, p I have, like this. Cool, now I have to figure out borrow. So basically, if it's a string or, uh, actually, I can do this here, right? So if it's in here, oh no, wait. Well, this is always simple, simple things. Oh, damn it. Rust type map, don't I have a set with, yeah, pod types. Do I have it here? Not yet. Cool, so I check with pod types unless, yeah. So basically, if um, mm, 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 p type is in pod types and p type is not in pod types and p type is not a string then So wait, if it's not in pod types or p type is string, right? Sorry. Then the borrow is a borrow like this. And that should be that. Let's see, we are currently building YouTube, I think. 
invalid syntax in required props call args equals all right so that's me so that's the one that has a syntax error somewhere here and obviously I don't see it if p type not in part types Okay, so what is if I completely remove this type type error? Oh, okay, maybe it's the call R. Okay, let's let's try this. Okay, now it generates and the compiler will say it all sucks. <laughs> Where's the unset coming from? Ah, okay, that, yeah, it's, it's all right. So we have to put this one to the left. And now we can once again try to do something here. I really have to do it that way. I, I, don't, see, I don't see what's wrong. Yeah, actually, I want to just generate this. That's still fine. Why am I so blind right now? What the? So it likes this, right? It doesn't like this. If true, wait. Oh, come on. Why do I not see what's wrong here? Some white space shit. So that works. So it's some something in here. Let's go step by step. Ah, in not. Ah, I'm so dumb. No. No. <laughs> oh man. Thank you for telling me it's a syntax error, you bitch. You know, that's that's old old programming language is like a parser that tells you nothing that tells you go to hell there's a syntax error do you know what's wrong what's wrong it's in this line what else do you want whereas um rust is like ten thousand times more comfortable so type is not there that's that's sad uh -huh. oh yeah it's a it's a ref here huh You know what? I will default to string. I should think it's a string because if the type is not set, then it's a. Then it is in fact a um, required parameter. If type is not available, available. We know it's the request value which should also be borrowed and there we go hey did i not just say that all oh, right <clears throat> let's do that P type, P type, oops. All right. And it works. Let's try the fusion tables. You now we get the calls right. That's cool. We have a call builder. Awesome. And now I look at the code. It's not as much at all for the most part. That's super cool. The structures will be something, but you know whatever whatever okay finally let's take care of the call stuff which we can already do right we can just call do it oh wait it's also depending on whether or not we should upload things um, and the upload stuff is actually a required 
parameter. Huh? For instance, let's have a look at insert. So live stream, let's go video insert because there you definitely must specify upload. Okay, so that's something we, we got right. All right. Uh, yeah, it's a media params, right? So if you have media params, then the call, the upload call is what it is. Yeah, okay, so let's 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 do this right away. I'm not yet, you know, I'm not really getting the values. I'm, I'm just going for the simple stuff now that it's just do it or whatever this configuration is. Um, And I'm also wondering. Here, look at that. Haha. -ha. I need access to this. Right now, I do not have access to this. So I have to put it into shared. That's okay. I'm doing a deep merge, so this will basically always be available for me. But it also means that I have to kind of hard code the access to the API stuff. Or do I? I need this value. So this is my information. And I, I'm not even, I don't even really know that I depend on APIs. Depends on suffix, depends on. So this API key I would now have to set. But honestly, this is very specific. I think the point is that we need this stuff in shared code. Yeah. So the terms we need. That's just it. And I think I will just put them into shared code. Oh, so see, so we have API blacklist already. The base path can remain. Yeah. So this is supposed to be shared. And type API, blah, 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 blah. So that should still work. It will rebuild anyway, regenerate. But that should be fine. And it is fine. That's cool. Let's see if it even compiles. But I think it will. The cool thing is that now we, have, now we will have access to the um, action names here and can basically figure out which methods to call. So. If we are in dry run, we don't do shit. So this happens at the end, you know, we have, no, we have the call and now we have to start, which is something we do later, um, set parameters to do parse, parse upload and output. Output information. That there's not much parsing to do. It's just something you have to kind of figure out how to do right. Then we make the call if necessary. And all this parsing here, whenever there is an error, we will put it onto our error list, right? The point is that now we are ready to make the call. Make the call. But we only do it if we are not in dry run. So if, oh, actually that's here, if dry run. We never have a result. We will always return what we have. Oh. <clears throat> Otherwise, we will make the call, and for now, we just return. And that's the logic, I think. This means for the discovery, I think that's something I can kick. Yup, yup. This means that for the discovery that I shall build right now. No, that's not the one. No. Just make. Once again, this means that for the discovery. Ooh, what's this? Oh, okay, sorry. If dry run, in any case, we want to have none. Then, if we have media params, if 
Yeah, for now I just exclude it like that. If we have media params, handle it. Otherwise, it's really a simple do it call, and this is the thing that we do now. And then the the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in any case we will have a. Oh, damn it. Target for now. I mean, this will be optimized because the re return value handling we have to kind of generalize a little bit. Um, so we have to basically know if we have to decode J's. If we have a structure to analyze or not, which is actually not always the the case because we could we have to handle downloads as well and stuff and there's something you know make the call handle uploads handle downloads very important also media downloads we need to know that but that's okay we have all the information that we that we need to understand what's going on and to do the right thing like json decoding and whatnot unfortunately we can't do pretty printing yet so whenever we output JSON, it's going to be very, very difficult to read. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Probably then I will definitely need CERD to do that. And then I might as well switch yup OAuth to CERD as well. And, you know, why not? And then it's all third and I'm done with that. However, for now, I will be happy if I can output anything. So I don't know how much time is left and if I can do this. So if we have media parents, I just return return none here. Oops, so that would be a problem. And otherwise, yeah, we make the call. Uh, and it should just be do it, huh? In any case, let's look it up real quick I really want to have this do it call now uh, so I right now I do list gives me this call then I can do do it which gives me the res the response value that I can and uh, decode response and response value and I have to do yeah And what do I return again? I return an API error. True. So let's do this. To do unify error handling. Because we make a call in any way, in any case, and this error handling will always be the same. But right now we only make one call. That's the point API terms. Uh, it's in shared now uh, action. API terms action, make the call, we will match on it. We have either an error of an API, API error, then we will return as some API error. Or we have an okay of the results which can be a tuple or something, and this is something we will figure out. We will unpack this as a, we will handle this as a tuple though. And that's the results. And uh, shit. Yeah, it's printed. So now I just print this <laughs> because this will give me something at least. Print line. Give me the debug. <laughs> and that's kind of the first way for me to test my stuff in simple cases. And this also includes the scope handling, for instance. That's pretty cool. Pretty neat. Debug. And now res. Thank you. 
I hope it will not take ownership of that one, even though it doesn't matter. And yeah, we return none. None, because there is no error. And that should be it. Core result is never read. Main 83. What am I building here? I think I build what? Discovery. Oh, just took a long time. So let's fix these discoveries, never read thingies. A call result. Why is this never read? It's actually supposed to be returned. Oh, HTTP status indicates failure. Mm. Cool. It made the call, man. It made the call. All right. I think I don't have to. Yeah, I will print print my argument still. But what's the value? What's this stuff here? Uh, CMN, CLI error. What? Oh, it's probably in. Why is this not used, huh? I think I use it. What the what the heck? Variant is never used. Parse error. That is true, but what can I do? <laughs> uh, unused imports. Main thirty-three. Oh, true. I don't. I use it, but I don't necessarily use it. That depends on the API. Unused import from string. That's true, but that's that as well depends on the API. Struct field never used config dear. Really? That's actually true. Yeah, I don't need to keep it, huh? Let's kick this. Let's kick all the warnings out because they just accumulate. Config dear. Yep, I do not use it. I pass it on. That's cool. So just options and hub. Fine. Let's do this again. Um, unused variable error. That's true. But I do not ha always have an error. Well. Er is never read. Okay, 82. That's interesting because I think it should read it. See? It is read, damn it. It's returned there, man. It's your problem. It's not. Is it true? Value assigned to call is ah, now I get it. True, it's right. So does it mean I can do this and it will be fine? Unused variable er, yeah, er, okay. Variant is never used. Okay, dead code, unused imports, unused variables. That's what I will allow now because yeah. So the cool thing is it figured out that the value that I assigned there or that this vari variable is always set. And that's good that it's smart enough to do that. So I actually do not have to. Uh, so actually he's right. This value is never read. And bad request. Shit. OK, so that's bad because my API obviously isn't working. <laughs> and uh, that's sad. Bad request, man. <laughs> Phew. Well, I can keep going, but if that doesn't even work, then uh, I know 
other things won't work either. That was API lists. Yeah, forget that. So I will need more debugging stuff at some point. Uh, but that's that's cool. I already do the first the first request here. Boom. Oh yeah, that's the unused variables. And let's put this in now. Feature. Uh, it's actually warn allow unused variables, huh? That's what you want. Allow unused variables. Unused imports and that code. Now there should be no warning left. And eventually I will try to remove these, obviously, or maybe use a big API that has all of these set so that removing this will be fine. It takes a long time to compile. Gee. But anyway. One hour, 25 minutes, more than enough here. We are done. Uh, dummy, we, yeah, that's totally done here. I'm, I'm done with that. So the next will be about improving the parsing. Um, you know, step by step by step, this will be a complete parser for everything. And then, you know, then it's about debugging the API. Ooh, that's, that's my biggest fear, actually. But I think it will be fine once we have, once we can print the requests to some channel. Okay, so I'll make the commit off camera.